Greetings, Doom fans, and welcome to another edition of the Frostbite Balls Daily Rant, here on the Doomstead Diner. Regular diner readers know that a couple of Sundays back, I published the Human Extinction Survey. They also know that it produced yet another little spat between the diner and Nature Bat's last, Guy McPherson's blog. Now, let's start with why I published this survey in the first place. As things spin further downhill economically, geopolitically, and environmentally, more and more people are talking not just about whether industrial civilization will collapse or whether the monetary system will go up in a hyperinflationary firestorm or get sucked down into a deflationary black hole. Now, the hot topic of collapse is whether homo saps are bound for extinction. Not in some far distant future, where it's just about inevitable, but in the very near term like in 20 years, according to Guy. So, it's a hot topic which interests collapsed blog readers, and the diner is a collapsed blog. It only makes common fucking sense to write an article on the topic, and the icing on the cake for this is being interactive with the readers with the survey form. I didn't plan on doing this when I dropped on a new forms plugin. I originally dropped that on to set up a user-contributed collapsed library card catalog of important collapsed resources. However, while I was testing the plugin for its capabilities, I tossed off a few questions about human extinction. Once I figured out how it worked, the idea popped in my head to write an article around it. Now, honestly, I never thought anyone but regular diners would take this survey, and it would take me at least two weeks to get even a dozen responses out of them. Then I got the bright idea that it would get a lot more responses if I plugged the article on NBL where I have done some cross-posting in the past, even though Guy and me don't see eye to eye or get along too well most of the time these days. (laughs) So, I emailed Guy and asked him if I could drop a plug article for the survey onto Nature Bats Last, and his response was, yes, please do. This was after the survey was published, so he had time to review it before himself publishing the plug article. It all goes swimmingly well for the first day or so. The survey pulls in like 75 responses on the first day, many with a whole lot of detail in them also. At the end of that next day, though, after numerous criticisms being leveled at the survey in his commentariat, when I asked Guy if he himself was going to take it, his reply was, no, it's stupid, and the responses will be stupid. I'm paraphrasing here. You can go to the Human Extinction Survey controversy article on the diner to find an exact copy-paste of the comments Guy made on Nature Bats Last. Now, if Guy thought the survey was stupid, then why the fuck did he ask me to please publish a plug article for it on NBL? He likes publishing stupid stuff on NBL? What the fuck? I sure wouldn't publish anything I thought was stupid on the diner. I publish things I disagree with all the time, but not if they are stupid things. Now, besides Guy and his acolytes over on NBL criticizing the survey as stupid, in the commentariat of the Diner blog, I get a very similar criticism from a professional shrink, who tells me what I already know, that the survey isn't scientifically designed, has a lot of holes, and won't provide scientifically valid results. No shit, Sherlock! I toss off the survey questions over a couple of days as I inquired amongst the diners what they thought should be included in such a survey. I just ask questions which come up all the time on collapsed blogs, which I read regularly so I know what questions are asked all the time and what topics are hot. I personally am interested in what people think about these topics and where they fit in the taxonomy of doomers. That is why I fucking blog on doom! You gotta have a fucking PhD and make your goddamn survey meet the criteria of the Journal of Psychology to jack it on the net and see what collapsing attitudes are? What the fuck? It's not like there aren't any PhDs chatting this up either. Hugo has that sheepskin and so does George. Everybody has to have a fucking doctorate in order to drop on an internet survey or express an opinion? What the fuck? None of these folks know near as much about data collection and analysis as Duma Support does. It's how he makes his fucking living. (laughs) Besides that, many if not most of the people writing on Collapse don't have the big kahuna sheepskin. I'm pretty sure Dimitri is not a PhD. Gail Tverberg is not a PhD. Jim Kunstler doesn't have doctor in front of his name. And I bet you dollars to donuts, none of the Tyler Durdens are PhDs either. (laughs) 
Besides Guy in a professional shrink criticizing the survey, over in the email stream amongst the pundits, this survey inspired. Dmitry Orlov asked me why the fuck this survey is not a waste of time, since it's not scientifically or statistically valid. If you thought the survey was a waste of time, Dimitri, then why the fuck did you waste your time taking it? (laughs) Okay, that's all the bad news on the survey. Now, the good news. First of all, as I record this rant, the survey has already pulled in about 300 submissions from Doomers. This actually is a statistically significant sampling of the collapsed blog readers, because the total population of people who read these blogs globally is really very small. No more than 25,000, probably. Second, Doomer Support, also known as the Database Cavalry from California, who does the back-end tweak into the diner for me if it's beyond my tech abilities, finds this collection of data very interesting, and he will run a meta-analysis of it to get a better handle on terminology, keywords, and so forth. This is the kind of thing Google does with ads, so they end up tailored to what you read on the web. It has great value in SEO, or search engine optimization, which is his business. Third, the email stream it inspired amongst the pundits already inspired two blogs, one by Hugo Bardi and another by Albert Bates. And I have permission from most of the participants of that email stream to go ahead and publish their responses. Not Dimitri, of course, though. (laughs) Fourth, the data so far collected is copious already and can fill many, many pages of blogs. Compared to the typical commentariat of any blog, it's much better organized. So even if it's not scientifically valid, you'll get a much better idea of the attitudes out there in the collapsed blogosphere and how they are distributed than you would just by reading blog commentaries. Very worthwhile. Not a waste of time at all, in my humble opinion. Far as my own opinions on near-term human extinction go, it's not out of the realm of possibility. But on the super short timeline of 15 years by 2030 that Guy promotes, it's highly unlikely. Habitat everywhere will not be destroyed that fast, even if his clathrate gun has been fired. Temperature ranges that Homo saps and their plants and animals can survive at will not be exceeded everywhere on the planet that fast. Far as nuke meltdowns and more Fukushimas are concerned, well, Everyone living within a 100-mile radius of Fukushima Daiichi 1 and 2 isn't dead yet. I suspect there will be some hot spots around where Homo saps cannot survive. But for the most part, what you will see is increases in cancer rates, higher child mortality rates, and so forth. This won't kill off everyone on a 20-year timeline. Not to say there won't be an enormous die-off of population inside this period of time. That's way more possible, even perhaps likely. Still... To say that every last Homo sap will be dead inside 20 years is an extreme viewpoint. For Homo sap to be truly extinct, you cannot have any of the species still walking the Earth anywhere. The further out you go on the timeline, the more possible extinction is. As the tagline on Zero Hedge goes, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. Extinction of Homo sap, in the corporeal sense of the word, is guaranteed at some point on the timeline. You gotta just make your best wild-ass guess on how far out that will be. In the meantime, do you give up all hope that Homo sap can survive the clusterfuck we have created here? I don't think so, because living without hope is an extremely depressing way to live. If anyone has a right to be without hope, I do. I'm nearly a quadriplegic now. I'm not going to live very long here, I don't suspect, but I still hope I do, and try to keep going another day. Every day you live is a struggle for survival, and why struggle for that if you are hopeless? Is there a reason to hope that Homo sap as a species can survive a while longer? Yes, I think there is. Insofar as we know, Homo sap is the only sentient being in the entire universe capable of comprehending its vast complexity and vast beauty. There may be others. People speculate that there are, but we do not know that for certain. So I say, no matter how bad it seems, no matter how tough it gets, you stay alive no matter what occurs. Channeling Hawkeye from the last of the Mohicans here. <laughs> You do this as long as you can to see the sun rise another day. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. See you on the other side, Doomers. 
And that's all the doom, this time until next time, here on the Doomstead Diner. Oh, and don't forget to make a donation to the diner if you like the rats. <laughs>